Hey, hello everybody. It's Brian Lett with DAV uh, coming to you again from my home office in my basement of my house in Northern Kentucky. And today I have a very special guest that I'm going to introduce to you. He's a DAV past national commander. He's been chairman of the board of directors for DAV. And he's also been a veteran of the year in his home state of Texas on two occasions. And if I uh, have my facts straight, he also, also has a uh, elementary school now in his uh, home state of Texas named after him. And that's uh, past national commander Bobby Barrera. Bobby, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, first and foremost, how are you doing? How is your family? We are doing well. And in fact, uh, in the middle of this crisis, we're going with a personal crisis with my mom. Uh, oh. She's almost uh, 98 years old. And my sister, who generally cares for her, had hip replacement. So now me and my brother are the backup. So we this is my week off and then sunday i go back and my brother goes back to his town so uh we're we're handling it well and we have lots of support from other family members which makes it certainly much easier to deal with no good i'm sorry to hear that obviously about your mom um, i'm glad you guys are able to be around and try to help her as much as you can and Absolutely. obviously we're all thinking of her and sending her our best wishes so uh, best of luck with that thank you so much i much appreciated no, of course. Um, I failed to mention in my intro, but Bobby is a Vietnam veteran of the United States Marine Corps, so Semper Fi and Ura. Semper Fi. Um, would you like to tell our audience at all um, about the injuries you sustained in Vietnam before we move forward here? Okay, let me briefly mention that uh, I was in my sixth week of being in Vietnam, and we were going out on a mission that intelligence could plan. And... Uh, we were in the convoy of cracks and we hit a, a 500 pound bomb that was rigged as a landmine and I, I when we took off from the staging area i was in track three with two in front two in the back so i felt kind of secure but what i didn't realize when i first mounted on the track was that i had the marine corps top sniper uh carl gunny sergeant carlos hathcock riding on the same track Wow. And Gunny Sergeant uh, Catcock had a $30,000 bounty on his head to whoever could put him out of commission. At that point, he had uh, 93 confirmed kills. So they were after him. They got us. And we blew up. Uh, all of us that survived and we're, uh, all came back to the United States and continued with different careers. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I would love to discuss that more, but first yeah. and foremost, you know, we're glad you're okay, obviously, and all that you've thank done since you. and all the lives you've impacted. Um, welcome home. And also, uh, thank you for your service. And that's, uh, that's a mind boggler one there. Uh, any Marine uh, knows that sniper well, and uh, just glad you're here and able to spend some time with us here today. Um, you know, with that in mind, obviously we're going through some unprecedented times. Uh, where we're all kind of dealing with this COVID-19, uh, sort of unprecedented. And as you've kind of touched on uh, with some of the injuries you sustained, but you know, many veterans are, whether it's TBI, PTSD, or other ailments, um, being isolated at home is not the ideal situation. Um, not for that. And I'm wondering, you know, how you dealt with it. Uh, do you have any examples of things you've done? And do you have any advice for veterans to try to help them kind of get out of their bubble a little bit, stay as normal as possible. Yeah. I think the, the first idea that, that has to be grasped by all of us, uh, whether you're a veteran or not, staying at home with all this isolation, is that because we're separated physically doesn't mean that we need to be separated emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. In fact, it's uh, more of a time to stay together, to stay connected. Uh, whether it's social or, or, or like one of my neighbors uh, lives across the street. I was outside yesterday. He's on the outside and from, from his side of the, of the street to mine, holler, how's it going? Do you need any help? Those are the kinds of things that we need, whether you're a veteran or not. The fact that we're isolated, that we're separated, we need to stay connected. And I think that is the, the first step. If we can accept that and we can work on it, and work on it together because you can be together uh, uh, and be isolated without having that connection. We need to stay connected. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't have said it any better. It's, it's part of the human condition, uh, wanting that human interaction. And like you said, it's more important now than ever. It, it can be easy, I think, to kind of be reclusive in situations like this. 
um, especially if you're somebody that might be battling anxiety or depression, or maybe you had social anxiety before all this even started, it might be easy to go into that shell. Um, but I think you just hit a home run with that. It, and people do need to push through that the best they can. And part of the reason we're liking to do these videos is one, uh, to get as many perspectives as we can, but to encourage other people that are watching these to do things just like this, to call veterans. And as you pointed out, you don't have to be a veteran to do that. Um, make a phone call, check in on them, see how they're doing. Don't let them become reclusive and retreat into their own corner. Um, I'm glad to hear about some of your stuff with your neighbors. Uh, anything else that you would want to tell a veteran as far as your advice and through your experience um, to push through this current situation? Yeah, I, I, I think it, I mentioned at the beginning uh, uh, accepting the fact that, that we we're separated physically, but not uh, emotionally. And I think that's what carries me. And I hope, and I, I would almost bet that that carries all of us who, who are isolated. Uh, you mentioned PTSD as one, and, and that's certainly a factor. They are sometimes isolated, even within the family, they isolate themselves and it becomes more difficult. So I think having the, uh, that support system becomes critical. I think it's doubly important that, that now that we are separated uh, physically, that we need to develop some kind of support system. And as a PTSD uh, individual myself, I understand that it's difficult sometimes to accept uh, uh, help. And I think the, the key step, and you mentioned the body check system, and I think that is the key to, to surviving, to overcoming, to live through this difficult time uh, with this virus that's going on. And I think uh, a simple a phone call, in fact, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call from a, a fellow veteran. He's a Vietnam veteran as well. He lives 80 miles from San Antonio, from, from, from my home. But uh, once a week, I get a phone call, and says, Alex says, are you doing okay? We share stories. We share concerns of other, other individuals. And that's what I mean by having that support system, being there for each other. Uh, I have a, 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 a group. There's a group of those. Uh, some of us are veterans and some are not that we we used to go out and can't do it anymore we used to go out uh, uh every friday we have breakfast together it would start out the day at seven in the morning and enjoy the camaraderie and, and the friendship that we have well now that we can go out for breakfast we still stay connected we share text uh, I, I i got a funny uh, the, uh cartoon from my sister uh, yesterday and immediately what did i do I share it out to the others and they all say, hey, keep them coming. We keep, we need to maintain that, that sort of sanity that will allow us to survive. And, and whether it's a, a, a joke, a, a, a vital piece of information that we need to share with each other, a simple thing as, as a phone call and saying, hey, like my friend did. Uh, the, I mentioned at the beginning how I got injured. One of the individuals who shared that 500 pound bond with me it was a, a Captain Highland. He was the intelligence officer. And he and I have stayed in contact. And once a week, I either mail him and text him, or he texts me, how's it going? He knows what we're going through with my mom, and a little extra, making sure that, that I'm not alone, making sure that we're in this together. And that to me is critical, Brian, because if we don't have the support of each other, if we don't have the compassion of each other, if we don't have the time to, to send a text, to send an email, to send a, a phone call, a, a, a little short note, that's all it takes, telling I care about you, I love you, I, I'm concerned, and, and together we will survive. Yeah, uh, Bobby, thank you very much for sharing that. I think you're dead on. Um, and for those of you that are watching, if you're looking for ways to get involved and kind of take some of the advice that Bobby is giving, it not only could be life-saving, but it could be life-changing. And we have, during our DAV Centennial, we do have a volunteer initiative called 100 Acts of Honor. Uh, we are considering these phone calls to veterans, whether you're a veteran yourself or you know a veteran in your family or you have a friend that's a veteran, even if it's a friend of a friend that knows a veteran, Please uh, try to track down that phone number, give them a call, see how they're doing. 
you can post it on your favorite social media platform. You can tag DAV with the hashtag 100 Acts of Honor. We're trying to highlight that story and let people know about your efforts. Uh, Bobby, I think I've taken enough of your time for now. Um, I really appreciate it. I will be bugging you, um, I'm sure, in the near future. Hey, I'm here to help any time. Uh, I, I mentioned the word compassion, and to me, uh, the DAV and its memberships have that compassion. They know, they've lived it, they've experienced it. So now we want to share it with each other, and that's the bottom line. No, amen. Uh, Bobby, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for your service. And a lot of that compassion that you talk about with DAV uh, came from your service in the organization. So thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your time today. And uh, like I said, I'll be reaching out sooner than later, and uh, I'll be bugging you for more. I'll be here. Semper Fi. All right, Semper Fi.